that most of this event is 25 minute lectures. This is a little bit of an experiment. And as the course director, it's my prerogative. Uh, we have Jose Barrera from San Antonio, Orrin Friedman from Philadelphia. And we're gonna have a little uh, discussion, a panel discussion, uh, shoot around focused on osteotomies and some surgical techniques. So we're gonna do some case presentations and we'll see where this goes. Uh, why don't we hit it off with Dr. De Barrera who will share his screen right now. Great, thank you, Brian. So I'm sharing my screen currently and let's see here, share. Great, and hopefully you can see my presentation here. Super, great. Well, I just wanna thank Brian and the UCI uh, staff for putting on this uh, otolaryngology updates um, uh, panel. And uh, we really wanna talk about improving the crooked nose. And I thought I wanted to just present an interesting case and see what the other panelists would do. So disclosure, I'm a speaker and grant recipient with Stryker. It has nothing to do with this presentation. And here's our, our patient. <clears throat> uh, some principles to, principles to consider. Uh, patient presents with a large kyphotic hump, has a low radix, has really short nasal bones, and has asymmetry of the nasal vault. So um, Brian, uh, Oren, what would you do? What well, you off, Warren? well, what's the uh, what's the patient uh, interested in uh, in having happen? The patient wants a a straight dorsum and a narrow, more narrow nose. He doesn't have any functional problems. He's just uh, purely interested in aesthetic improvement of his of his nose. Now, do you have any uh, any other views available? Yeah, we sure do. Here's his three quarter views. And here's his lateral view. Great. And then uh, just uh, if you could pull up the frontal view one more time. No problem. Great. All right, so patient is interested in aesthetic changes to the nose. They've got a wide nose. Uh, they've got facial asymmetry uh, along with, and, and that's contributing to their nasal asymmetry. Um, with a uh, slightly wider left side of the face and a narrower right side of the face. And um, along with that, I think uh, that's the primary thing responsible for the uh, asymmetry of the nose. Um, there are different ways to approach the cosmetic wishes of the patient. Um, what does the septum look like? Is it pretty crooked or not too bad? The septum is not too bad. He does have a um, maxillary crest deviation. He does have a, a high septal deviation as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are different ways I would approach this, uh, either external or endonasal. I'd probably um, approach it endonasally ultimately because I think their tip looks pretty good. Um, doesn't require that much work uh, for the tip. Um, so I would, uh, do a uh, dorsal reduction, um, most commonly for a patient with short nasal bones. Uh, I would do um, a letdown procedure, uh, including application of endonasal spreader grafts in particular because of the short nasal bones that he has. Um, and um, the osteotomies in order to help narrow the nose uh, and the letdown of course, uh, as part, including the osteotomies to help lower the the bridge, but given that he's got short nasal bones based on what you said and what it looks like on this image, uh, most of it will come from uh, resection of the ventral aspect of the septum. Great. Let me uh, go for forward and, and show you what we did. Uh, we like to do a preservation rhinoplasty with a letdown approach. And so this is a, a case that we were able to record. We did utilize a low, low, high osteotomy. We used a piezoelectric saw in order to perform our low, low, high osteotomies. And then we took uh, a wedge resection uh, as you would for a letdown procedure. And there's our wedge resection. Uh, same uh, was performed on the right-hand side. And we use again, the piezoelectric saw. You can see the demarcation of the, uh, of the um, uh, bony wedge that we removed. And, uh, and so we elevated, um, we did do an open approach and elevated uh, through a small 
uh, incision uh, superior to the inferior turbinate there. And the advantage of this piezoelectric saw is just for precise uh, osteotomies. You can use osteotomes as well uh, in order to perform this procedure. And there's our wedge resection on the right side and we'll compare it uh, right and left. Um, and we try to really estimate the amount. Here's a bony resection on, a, on an anatomic human specimen. We try to remove the exact amount of bone on both sides and we wanna keep the nose fairly straight. We use a, another um, type of um, piezo uh, osteotome uh, to do the transverse osteotomy. And that's a transverse osteotomy. Here you can see where we're making our transverse osteotomy. And you can see how much uh, dorsal preservation reduction we, we get. We did perform a high septal excision. And through that high septal excision that afforded us uh, a cartilage that we use for a spreader graft. And you can see here how we demonstrate that on this anatomic specimen. And then we also uh, obtained a septal extension graft. He, here are vertical releasing incisions that we performed. And when you perform these vertical releasing incisions, it allows you to have some dorsal flexion. So you're preserving the, the bony, the osseocartilaginous junction, but these vertical releasing incisions allow you to flex anteriorly the, the amount of dorsum. And then we can do what some people call a Tetris maneuver to lower the cartilaginous, dors cartilaginous dorsum. Here's the patient again, and we're securing the cartilage here. And uh, we're uh, securing the letdown through these vertical releasing incisions and a permanent 4-0 PDS suture. And you can see here how we're suturing this on the anatomic specimens for more clarity. And then at the end, uh, this is our post operative result immediately on the table. And then I will show you his uh, five month results here. So here is five months post-op and uh, before and after. And uh, feel like, I feel like we got a pretty good reduction of the dorsum and the trouble points for, for me here were the short nasal bones, which I was very concerned about, but we were able to manage it uh, utilizing this procedure. We did get a little bit of rotation using a septal extension graft on the nasal tip. Uh, but these were our post-operative outcomes at five months so far. And this is the base view. You can see here the extent of this uh, large hump and how this is nicely reduced post-operatively on, on the base view. And that's our case. Thank you. All right. Nice. So, um, it, it, it's interesting. Um, we had an earlier a presentation by Dr. Toriyumi on preservation techniques. So this is another great illustration of the trend that is circling the globe right now.